Hi guys, it's France. Welcome to this journal on Monday, week 126. I'm starting with some stamping today using a grey memento ink and one of the stamps that I designed for a stamp boutique, which is the mashup stamp. Randomly stamping all over, I don't care if it's regular or not, I just want to have something going on in the background of my page. I'm working in my Coptic Binded Handmade Watercolor Paper Art Journal, that's a mouthful. And today's video is 25 minutes long, but it took me a little less than two hours to tape it. So yes, please keep in mind that my um, hands don't move that fast in real life. Um, this is about 400% faster than reality. I'm going through my little box with all the pieces of fabric that I keep aside. And after stamping, I'm selecting a couple of those that I want to use on the side of this spread. And again, distressing them. And I'm even going in with pliers to really distress them as much as I can. I've added some stitching and to make sure that the back side will still be usable, my under thread is white. Now I know that I will probably be covering this sewing up, but that's okay. Punching out some circles out of a 7 Dot Studio uh, sheet of paper and using a variety of dimension. Now that I have all my circles sorted, I can start placing them and I'm cutting some parts away, which I will be using again on the edges of the spread. I'm gluing down the circles just using soft matte gel from Finnabar. I need my cambric and the other fabric to stay down just a bit more, so I'm adding a little bit of heavy body gel here and there to stick it down to the paper. Thank you. 
Then I'm adding a generous layer of gesso, which will allow me to blend everything together. And even if in the end it will be a generous layer, I'm applying it um, little by little, so really building up the layers of gesso. And now to add some color, I added some uh, tape to cover the cambric from the previous page, just to protect it a little bit. I sprayed some water and now I'm applying PBO Color X using a wet paintbrush and then blending it using water. And to also build up the layers of color, I'm also playing with heat. So I'm drying it with my heat gun while I keep adding color and water. You can find all the references of colors that I used on my website and the link is in the description of this video. So I'm happy to have a lot of colors at one side of the page, but on the other side I want to keep it softer. This will allow me to not only have a lot of contrast in the texture and the shapes, but also in the intensity of color.
To accentuate the shape of the circles, I'm going in with Derwent's Intense Pencils and then using just a tiny bit of water, I'm blending them into the color of the Colorex. So these are water-soluble pencils. And then to enhance the um, texture, again, I'm going back in with Chesso. Mm -hmm. 
To make my circles pop, I'm adding some charcoal pencil around the circles and then using a paper blender, I'm softening um, the pencil around the circles again. I chose my wording and now I'm just getting it ready in the shape that I want to use it. Adding some archival ink on the edges to make it work with the charcoal that I have around the circles as well. As I know that I will be adding some more on top of everything, I'm sticking them down. Those are stickers, but I'm adding some soft matte gel to stick them down and make sure that they will stay in place. Those are little Tim Holtz hangers, which have been rusted like in the real way with vinegar and salt and a lot of patience and time. And then I'm gluing them down. Now I'm gluing them down using soft matte gel again. And yes, they will stay in place. It just takes some patience, which is a very ugly word, I know, but sometimes you need to have patience. Making my words pop just like the rest, adding some pencil as well, and I forgot that little circle when I was doing the rest. It took me a moment to decide how I wanted to alter the texture of um, the fabric. I knew I wanted to add something um, and then I just followed my first idea, which is always the best way to go, to follow that first idea and I applied light modeling paste and no, my glue wasn't dry yet. So 
it will take a bit more patience to get that to stick to the page. So just adding it using a silicone brush from Finn and this will really make you wonder what it is that was on the page to start with, which is basically just the fabric. But applying the modeling paste on top of it alters it in such a way that it gets more interesting for the eye. And when it's dry, I'm going back over it with a gesso to blend it even more all together. The modeling paste and the gesso picked up some of the color of what was going on underneath as the Color X is a water reactive color. So I'm enhancing that using the same pencils that I used for the circles. Then I also added some more of the charcoal pencil, uh, which I cannot show you because my head was really in the way. I'm working with a new arm to hold up my camera and I still have to learn what my distance is to work with, so better next time. And then again using water to blend the pencil where I want to have it blend. So the, the sewing is gone and that's why I uh, came back in with the charcoal pencil. Because I wanted to have that memory of what was underneath, that's just for me. I also added some journaling around some of the circles, which you won't see either because that's quite private. Um, and I used two pens. As you can see, my head is really in the way. I'm very sorry about that. I'm using glaze to make the text pop a little more. Uh, again, contrast between everything that's matte on the paper and then the shiny text. So I added my journaling using a black and a white pen so that I'm the only one who can read what it says. I hope you liked today's video. If so, don't forget to hit the like button. See you back next time. And meanwhile, please subscribe to my channel. Bye bye.